This is not a review. I repeat, this is not a review. This is just me mindlessly ranting, okay? This is just me ranting on something I'm annoyed by. That's all this is. <clears throat> Teacher-student relationships, inappropriate power dynamics, preying on students' emotional instability, blatant manipulation and harassment, and for the ultimate cherry on top, romanticizing predatory behavior. These are the most notable main keywords of the webtoon that I'm about to sink my teeth into, so content warning, boys. If that bugs you, then you gotta go, because I'm about to trash all over this. Hey guys, you know how Webtoon is a notoriously terrible website if you want to look for a comic with actual quality, and the entire website is just a trash fire of cringy romance comics that glorify toxicity? Yeah, I think I found the absolute worst version of it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is... The Fate. A f***ing awful name. The Fate is a slice of life... <clears throat> A romance comic about a predator teacher that preys on one of his emotionally vulnerable students. If your first instinct to me informing you of that was to projectile vomit, congratulations! That means you still have sanity. Boys, seriously, this comic is so aggressively cancerous that it looked at that one Zootopia abortion comic and told it to hold its beer. Look, Webtoon is a place where anybody, usually new budding writers and artists, stretch their creative muscles. And I'm about to go off hardcore on this thing, and I can't deny that I really do feel bad for being so harsh to Towards this. After all, this is just some guy's work on Webtoon Canvas. Uh, it, it's actually made by two chicks, to be specific, if I'm not mistaken anyway. Uh, my point is, I do feel bad, but I can't help but get angry. Because here's the deal. It is absolutely true that this is just some weirdo self-indulgent fantasy, but the issue I have is where it's being publicized. The primary user base of Webtoon is like stupid-ass, impressionable preteen girls, and this is a clearly toxic and unhealthy relationship between a disturbing predator and an emotionally unstable high school student that is clearly being displayed like it's some kind of cute and complex relationship. So when the aforementioned dumbass preteen girls read crap like this, they're going to think it's perfectly acceptable. They're going to think it's totally fine to cling on to toxic relationships with people that you should not be looking at romantically. That's a part of what makes me so angry at this f***ing thing. Fetishizing sex predators is bad enough, but you're also catering this shit to kids and teens. Boys, look, I'm not trying to be a snowflake here. I'm not gonna say this comic is bad simply because inappropriate age difference and anime cliche level harassment is a thing here, okay? I see that all the time in awful isekai shows and stuff, and I can shrug that off. Here's the deal. If this was a story that actually took the concept of a complex and messed up relationship between two people from completely different perspectives of life and shined it in a realistic light, like like Koei Kaze or the absolutely fantastic Garden of Words, I wouldn't say anything. I would actually give this thing credit under those circumstances for trying to be interesting. But that's obviously not what this is. You can tell by looking at the obnoxiously glossy art style and writing that's trying way too hard to rip off basic bitch anime cliches. This is a comic that's gonna glamorize sex predators taking advantage of vulnerable kids. Y you know what? Redo of Healer is better than this. Yeah, that's right. That one anime and light novel that's just mindless edgelord bullshit. And the reason why it's better is because that edgelord bullshit, that's the whole point of it. It's something you're supposed to laugh your ass off at intentionally because of how ridiculously edgy it is. That anime and light novel are both self-aware of how stupid it is. This, this is not. You're supposed to totally get behind this degenerate-ass relationship. Oh, and just in case you think this is some obscure webcomic I stumbled into by accident, it's not. It's actually extremely popular on Webtoon. 7.8 million views and a 7.68 out of 10 rating. Now, before you lose your faith in humanity, I'm gonna try to alleviate the negativity just a little bit by reminding all of you guys that Webtoon's entire user base primarily consists of, like I said, dumb, hormone-enraged, introverted little girls with no experience with the outside world. And there's a lot of those on planet Earth, so it's not that shocking that this is popular. Regardless of that, this comic is still bad. And worse yet, in my opinion, this is more content that makes all us furries look like mentally sick freaks. And I feel embarrassed for saying this, but that's actually what offends me the most here. Boys, don't judge all furry comics based off of reading this single piece of grade A garbage. If you want a good furry comic, go read Africa. 
or I Hope So, or Sabrina Online, or Kimono Giga, or Beast Complex, or Beast Stars if you want an obvious one. Read any of those. They have flaws too, yes, but they have actual quality alongside them, okay? Anyway, I'm not gonna keep babbling on. Let's just get into the comic. So yeah, here we go. It was just another day in generic furry high school, and we're introduced to two things. One, the main dude, who made me bust my ass laughing right off the bat because he has a facial expression that can only be described as Mommy doesn't understand. And two, you're introduced to the ultimate high school mainstay cliche that we all know and love, pretentious monologues. Yeah, that's right. That kind of reminds me of another pretentious edgelord teenager that I talked about. Huh. I wonder who. Anyway, yeah, this kid's name is... Sh Shayus? Shayus Re <laughs> Reno Renoir? What is that, French? Whatever, uh, moving along. Let's read up what he says right here. I'm, I'm gonna do the Mandy voice, boys. Get ready. <clears throat> Sometimes one person can become a whole world for you. <laughs> and, you and you give yourself to this world because <laughs> you believe this happiness was totally worth it. And then you suddenly feel worried because your because your world turns his back on you. He loses interest without any re that ugh, blah 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 whatever. It's a, it's a bunch of high school relationship emo bullshit. Okay, uh, to sum it all up, the the emo bottom boy Shayus. God, that name is stupid. He explains in this monologue that he revolved his entire life around a significant other in the past, but he got abandoned by said significant other. And he had an emotional breakdown over it, apparently, because he got abandoned, and then he got sent to a hospital over a panic attack or something like that? Oh my god, okay, already, right off the bat, this is, this is page one, and there's already so much to unpack here. First of all, this dude, uh, by the way, that's a guy, <laughs> you probably couldn't tell, he revolved his entire life around the guy he was dating? Who the hell does that? This kid needs friggin' therapy, bro. Look, I I'm not a psych- I'm not a psychologist, but even in normal relationships, you definitely don't cling so hard onto your girl or boyfriend to the point that you lose your goddamn mind when you break up with a motherfucker. Especially in high school, where dumbass teenagers change their opinions and feelings on things at the drop of a hat. Second of all, you see this character's stupid bio right after this page, it's right below it, and according to this bio, this character is 18 years old. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Pointing out that your main sub for your Sex Predator High School comic is 18. Hmm. I wonder if that's a, a safety net for something. Hmm. Third of all, I couldn't help but notice that this character is specifically designed to be a hormone-enraged, mentally unstable bottom that clings on to whatever significant other he can get his hands on. So yeah, right off the bat, I'm completely revolted. Because this seems less like the scenario to a, a slice-of-life romance comic about cute animals, as it says on the front page of this piece of crap, and more like the scenario to one of those retarded NTR hentai comics you find in Edgelore Post on Reddit for shits and giggles. Like, if whatever loser made this thing wanted to just make porn, the, the person should have just made porn and not act like she has the ability to actually write. I'm just saying. Okay, moving along. Right after this guy, we get awkwardly introduced to the obligatory top of this f***ing comic. Literally, the first thing you see this guy do is reject one of his students, making a romantic advance towards him in the middle of the school, like that's some kind of normal-ass thing. Oh, and this cucklord's name is also equally terrible. His name is... <laughs> his name is Luca Fiet. Yes. God, these names are so... Okay, well, this is definitely French, by the way. But still, these names are ass. This is textbook deviant level shit. <laughs> you know how, like, when you give a character a name that you think sounds cool in your mind, but it actually sounds retarded when you say it out loud in an actual sentence? You know what I mean, like that? Like, that's basic bitch deviant level stuff. Uh, since I'm on the subject of deviant art level stuff, let's talk about things outside of the weird premise and story. The art style. It's good. I don't like it. I, I honestly, I can't really stand looking at it. But I, I, don't, I, don't like to make, I don't like to make fun of people's art styles. It's just something I don't like doing, you know? 
And regardless of whether I like it or not, it is objectively a tasteful art style that I know that Webtoon's user base would instantly fall in love with. So, uh, you know, <laughs> whether I like it or not, it's doing its job. But here's the deal. Who cares? When you make a comic, the scenario comes first, in my opinion. The artistic ability comes second. If the only thing that mattered in a comic was art style, then that would mean that that one Zootopia abortion comic was objectively good. And spoiler alert, it's not. It's graphic novel AIDS. Aside from the art style, pretty much everything else outside this comic's awful premise is also terrible. The basic fundamentals regarding this piece of crap are flawed by default and the writing is an actual joke. Now look, like I said, this is just a webtoon made by two people living in their goddamn house. This is not professionally made. I'm not expecting an Attack on Titan levels of writing. But I still feel like I have the right to complain, considering the fact that the actual story outside of the weird premise is a catastrophe of characters doing and performing random erroneous actions that make no f***ing sense, simply because it makes the current scene look more dramatic or emotional or whatever. Again, that's DeviantArt level shit, where you kind of just have characters do random things because that's what you want to happen, instead of it actually forming a cohesive story. I'm gonna show you right now, let's go. Okay, so, the emo kid Shayus, or whatever his name is called, chills in school. And before he gets into his classroom, he does more stupid emo monologues. Let's read this one now. <clears throat> Reading other people, I've learned how to behave. I know when to smile, and when to make eye contact, and when to keep my head down. I'm like a machine that, <laughs> that knows the best action. Some people say this way is false. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't do this in the in the Mandy voice. I should do this like in the Shadow the Hedgehog voice. Some people may say this way is false. They may say they may say I should be sincere, but not but not the the one Yeah, the, the butt's not supposed to be there. That just threw me off. They say I should be sincere, not the one people want to see. The one that is the real me. But my problem, <laughs> my problem, <laughs> my problem is that I've love. <laughs> I've love. <laughs> I can't even say it. I've love. <laughs> I've lost the real me. <laughs> I can't feel the way I did before. Don't turn your back. <laughs> Bro, this is DeviantArt journal level shit. I know so because this is the way I typed back when I was 16 and I was still using DeviantArt. This shit is fucking incredible, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, okay, so between this and I Am Not Starfire, is it even possible to make a teenage angst vest without someone going into a droning essay about how supposedly miserable and deep their life is? Oh my god. Alright, alright, alright. Here's where stuff starts getting less laughable and more offensive. Here we go. <clears throat> so yeah, the emo kid is in class now and he conveniently has the... He has the the heartthrob Chad alpha male chick magnet teacher as his personal instructor for class, right? The dude gives the sex predator guy an acknowledging nod and moves on with his life. And uh, the teacher dude gets upset because the emo kid thinks he I ignored him? I don't know why you would suddenly get triggered over that, but okay. Keep in mind, these two characters are complete strangers right now. Like, they do not know each other in any way, so it, was, it makes no fucking sense. Uh, anyway, the teacher guy demands this random ass kid's attention. So, as any normal person would, he starts to sexually harass said student that he believed ignored him because he wants his attention. He starts grabbing onto him right off the bat and groping him. So yeah, that makes perfect sense for someone to suddenly do. And then the teacher very blatantly starts playing with his hair, which at this point any normal person would slap the taste out of the motherfucker's mouth. But I guess we're running on anime logic, so I, I guess that's not gonna happen. <sighs> Guys, honest to God, I feel like an idiot for even trying to narrate what's happening right now. This is literally the plot to college porn. Oh, and just in case you thought this would be subtle from here on out, you are totally mistaken. Because this comic launches headlong in the trashiness harder than a dumpster diver in swimming gear. 
So, instead of trying to narrate, let me... Um... Let me go ahead and explain what's about to happen the same way I think the creator of this piece of shit was thinking when she wrote this. We're in art class, so now the emo bottom bitch guy has to draw his sexy heartthrob teacher while he's shirtless because he suddenly decided to be a model for the next painting. Oh my god, it's so scandalous. I wonder if he's gonna get a crush on him. Oh my god. And then he grabs a firm hold of his hand and the cute emo boy goes totally numb when he gets touched by him as displayed by this drawing that is nonstop tell do Show. Oh, oh, and then he whispers in his ear so sensually because, you know, grown men preying on 18-year-old emotional train wrecks is totally hot. <sighs> God, I cannot stand shit like this, man. Why is it that when a story is about an ugly sex predator stalker, it's a horror story, but when it's a totally hot sex predator stalker, it's a super quirky and exciting romance? Like, what the f*** is this? I can't stand this garbage, bro. You see, I told you guys this is not a review. This is just me mindlessly ranting. I'm not even saying anything, like, analytical here. I'm just bitching and crying. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah, let me point out one more thing. How do the other students in this classroom apparently react to blatant sexual harassment? Oh, they giggle and laugh about it, of course! Ha <laughs> ha! Our teacher's grooming one of our students. That's so quirky and cute. Uh, oh, I fucking hate this comic. Oh, okay, I just realized something. How the hell is this allowed on Webtoon? I've seen comics with gore, completely censored gore by the way, get banned off the website altogether. How is this shit acceptable? Let me go ahead and look at the rules and guidelines on the website about that. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> uh, I'm giving it a read and Webtoon doesn't seem to have any rules that forbid the ethical nature of what's going on in this comic right now. I mean, no shit, this would have been gone long ago if it was, but apparently as long as there's no full frontal nudity or fetish or sexual act specifically made for the sake of gratification, it's all fair game. Meanwhile, let's look at their guideline policy on gore. <clears throat> We do not allow graphic depictions of gratuitous violence or content that promotes acts of violence. Examples of prohibited content include brutal extended graphic acts of violence, depiction of sadism or glorification slash promotion of inflicting harm on others, and glorification or promotion of self-harm. Okay, so the glorification of inflicting harm on others and self-harm is not allowed, understandably. But the glorification of sexual predators and toxic relationships is perfectly fine. Oh, okay, Webtoon, that makes perfect sense. Gotcha. <sighs> okay, back to the comic. After the borderline child grooming class ends, the teacher dude does some 90s porn level shit where he asks the emo kid if he wants to stick around for private lessons. And obviously nothing comes out of it. And that's the end of chapter one. Good job on randomly throwing in some anime level BS before the chapter ends. All right, we finished the first chapter, guys. Wasn't that an amazing setup for a fantastic three-dimensional story? Wasn't it, guys? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Totally, totally, totally. Okay, boys, it's pretty clear at this point that this comic is going to be nothing but the glamorization of a taboo relationship. Because it's so forbidden and hot. Uh, kind of like those weird incest hentai shows. The only way I can bring myself to keep reading this garbage at this point is if I wanted to prove a point outside of just mindlessly complaining about the fact that I don't like this and it's crap outside of its garbage premise. And I don't really have a point to prove here, but I do have one extra thing that I'd like to complain about. So we're gonna go into a couple of more pages. At this point, maybe, just maybe, you're wondering what kind of moron would unironically enjoy reading this graphic bile. I want to go into detail on that, so let's get into chapter 2. More of the same from chapter 1, so here we go. Okay, so one of the first things that happens at the very beginning of chapter 2 is the, the teacher guy is having a wet dream fantasizing about f***ing that random ass emo student that he just met and learned about yesterday. Any normal person would look at this guy and say, you're mentally ill, but an actual fan of this garbage is probably foaming at the mouth right now, going, eh, oh my god, that's so hot, the teacher wants him so bad. I wonder what's gonna happen in the next chapter. Oh my god, eh. Ugh. After that, the future prison inmate goes to school. Surely he will be professional this time. 
surely. In between his interactions with the emo edgelord bottom catboy is really awful, annoying back and forth dialogue between himself and one dimensional characters that have no personality outside of being obnoxiously quirky to make this comic look like it has a personality. Because you know, stories about attempted rapists are totally quirky. <sighs> One page later after the teacher walks into school and exchanges dialogues with the character that you'd be shocked to find out is actually a guy, he suddenly stumbles into his future rape victim for the second time. And yeah, they exchange nervous looks and then quickly separate from one another. But not before the teacher stares him down viciously like Mandy would staring at a f***ing box of donuts. Any normally functioning human being that's reading this garbage would consider the idea of a guy who just finished fantasizing about f***ing his 18 year old student that is now staring at said student like a pedophile outside of a playground to be disgusting and disturbing. But an actual fan of this garbage is definitely losing their mind right now. Eh, that's so cute, he can't take his eyes off him. Eh, eh my god. Like I said, in between the moments when the characters aren't together making me cringe, the comic is introducing more lazily designed characters who have the personality of an unsalted cracker. Who cares? That's not what's important. What's actually important is what's coming up right now. Uh, okay, you know how most actual romance comics and anime and etc. actually show the characters slowly grow and come together over the slow time span of their personalities actually clicking over time? Yeah, well, uh, that doesn't happen in this, because that will require actual talent and skill, and the very basic fundamental ability to write competently. So instead, we just get a stupid-ass time-lapse where the emo student narrates on how much of a degenerate creep his top is. He openly says that he gets stalked by him, yes, stalked by him, and I think I'll read this part out right now to show you guys the point of what I'm trying to get at. This comic is just instant gratification for stupid-ass little girls. I understood with my mind how everything was wrong. He is my teacher, and I am his student. Such contacts are forbidden. Oh. He goes through lovers like they are toys, while I can't put myself together after a single breakup. Oh my god. Yes, very smart. Announce the context of the relationship to the audience like we're all stupid. Yes, more tell, don't show. Very good writing skills. <clears throat> I didn't want to become a new toy of him, but there were no other other perspectives with his a attitude to, to others? What? Point being, there's a lazy ass time lapse where the emo kid talks about the totally scandalous relationship between him and his teacher like it's a, a hunt between predator and prey. Oh my god, it's so hot. And, um, yeah, that's my breaking point, boys. I'm stopping here. Trust me, I want to continue to point out some extra things that piss me off. Like how background characters are openly acknowledging how this kid is getting sexually harassed for days and days, and their only response is, It's okay, he wasn't serious! Like, I could go on and on and complain about so many extra things, but I will not because... The point that I want to get across, and the thing that I want to complain about here, is the type of idiots that enjoy this garbage. Whoever read this nonsense and unironically liked it is guaranteed to have completely ignored any of the repulsive circumstances of this romance, quote unquote. The type of people who love and salivate over degenerate shit like this are only in it for the most shocking moments to enrage their goddamn estrogen. And moments like that go on for the rest of this dumpster fire ass webtoon. The fan base of this comic is guaranteed to be nothing but hormone enraged little girls whose only understanding of homosexuality is based off of yaoi anime and hentai. The dumbass girls who unironically enjoy Twilight and those awful teenage rom-coms that cynical reviews makes fun of. That's the target demographic of this webtoon. Stupid ass little girls who just want to see a ship occur, not concerning themselves over the disgusting circumstances as long as it satiates their weird little fantasies. Boys, you know how those crappy Michael Bay movies are all awful, but they still make millions upon millions of dollars because they provide the bare minimum of what a stupid hormone enraged preteen boy wants? 
Yeah, that's what this comic is, only it's for stupid, hormone-enraged preteen girls. That's why, despite this comic being so revolting, embarrassingly written, and awkward in every fiber of its being, it's got over 7 million views on Webtoon and so on. Stupid ass girls just want to see a ship happen with pretty glossy artwork on it. Like a 7 year old girl playing with a dollhouse. So they squee at all the cringy drama moments and borderline softcore porn between a grown adult and a barely legal high school student. And what happens in chapter 1 and 2 is basically a microchasm of everything that happens in the later chapters. Disjointed anime level sexual cliches, deviant art edgelord angst, characters making erroneous decisions and getting upset for idiotic reasons that make no sense to perpetuate conflict, people acting like relationships with your sexual assaulting teacher is perfectly fine and adorable unless it's time to suddenly treat the story like it's a super serious drama out of nowhere, and more moments that feed into the idea of a, a creepy toxic relationship being a good thing. Boys, I wanted to go up to chapter 3 at least. I really wanted to go further and further into dumping on this, but I legit cannot continue because reading this crap is legit exhausting after a while. Another reason why I'm stopping is because at this point I don't even feel like I'm showing you guys an actual story so much as softcore porn. And that's the vibe I get when I'm reading this shit. This comic just feels like some loser ass furry on the internet wanted to make a porn comic, but at the same time, said loser wanted to believe that she was actually a talented writer. So the creator decided to twist some porn scenario into an actual story. And the deal is this, if this was just another sex obsessed furry's weird little fantasy sitting around and collecting dust on a corner of E621 somewhere, I wouldn't care in the slightest since at the end of the day, it's just some somebody's fat material. But when you choose to turn something into an actual story, people are going to treat your work as such. And when you publicize the glamorization of sexual assault and inappropriate power dynamics to actual preteens, you're going to get shit on. And once again, it's not only offensive because of the scenario alone. The deal is that it's also a shambolically written angst fest where nobody acts or speaks like a normally functioning person. There are a very small handful of good webtoons out there, but in order to find those good webtoons, you have to dig through a colossal pile of shit to get at. And I feel like this comic that I'm talking about right here is one of the most prime examples of why Webtoon is such a horrible, horrible ass place to look for a comic that's actually good. I'm gonna have some links to actually good Webtoons in the comment section so people can go look at something that's actually worth looking at. As for this, however, this is legit the worst Webtoon I've ever fucking seen. No hyperbole, no exaggeration. That's all there is to it, boys. Thanks for watching.